Uh, it is still showing you in practice session. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Good evening, George, Bhaskar, Bindu, Deepu, Gopa. Good evening, everyone. Bhaskar Metra, Bindu, Deepu, George Jos, Gopa Kumar, Ganesh, Govind, Isha. Kartik, Lakshmipati, Manoj, Pratyush. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Savita, Selva. Good evening. People are joining in. Just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat box if you can hear me and see me clearly and see the presentation. Good evening, Lakshmi. Good evening, Manoj. Just give me a yes or a why in the chat box if you can hear me and see me clearly and also can see the presentation. Thank you, Raju. Thank you, Ganesh. Wonderful. So we'll just give it about four minutes more and then we shall start. We have currently about nine, uh, 18 participants. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, good evening. Good evening, Tanme, Sulaksh. Great to see about 25 of you joining in today, Saturday evening. I hope all of you are safe and healthy with your families and friends. Great, Tanmay. Same here. Very happy to see you as part of the session, Tanmay. Audio issue. Happy Teacher's Day. Thank you so much, Pratyush. Thank you so much. Glad that you remembered. Yes. And all people who have teachers at home, happy Teacher's Day to all of your parents. Thank you so much. 
Suresh, I hope you can hear me. Thank you, Sanjeevni. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richa. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you so much. Yes, I shall convey to all our work better faculty. Great. Welcome to all of you who are just uh, logging in. Please give me a yes in the chat box if you can see me and hear me clearly. Great to hear that, Pallav. Very nice thoughts. Thank you, Pallav, for those kind thoughts. Yes, we hope to make a difference to all of you. I hope today all of you remembered the, all the old teachers who have impacted your life. And I know they are, making, they are struggling a lot in this pandemic. I know a few teachers within my family and they are really, really working hard for your children. Thank you so much, Isha. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, so we are bang at six o'clock. So let's just get this uh, ball rolling now. Yeah, good to know that, Pallav. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so here we go. So let's on this very nice day of uh, Teacher's Day, let's welcome all of you to the Work Better Club to yet another session on what we call as how to delegate effectively, right? And I'm, I'm sure some of you know me, but for those who don't, uh, let me quickly do a quick introduction. I'm Gautam Gupta. I'm head of business development at Work Better and also a master trainer. I have overall about 32 years experience in the corporate world. And of course, last 17 years as a professional in the training industry. With Work Better, I have been around for about four to five years and I played two roles, as I said, right? So today uh, we're going to talk about this very interesting topic called how to delegate effectively, right? This is a word which probably many of you, especially people who all of you who are leaders in this group and who are managers and supervisors would always be, you know, wanting to do, but somehow it doesn't happen. Many of you do it pretty well. And some of you sometimes struggle and some of you who are new to this supervisory role are possibly not able to do that as effective. And many of, many of you who are not yet leaders and supervisors, but many a times you have to probably, you know, get job done for mothers. There are probably some students who are part of student communities, you know, college communities, right? And you're part of certain groups. Then also you have to work in teams and delegate work to each other. I'm sure some of these things which I'm going to talk today will also, you know, important for you. And you can probably use some of these tips and techniques whenever you think of delegating some tasks to somebody. But it will be more important and probably more relevant takeaway for all the supervisors and managers in the group who are right now, you know, in their organization working at that level, right? So for, I'm sure there will be a good takeaway from everybody. And so please pay attention and please focus while we are conducting this session, right? So we will talk about this particular skill, which is how to delegate effectively. Yeah. And so before I go ahead, let me quickly uh, set the ground rules. As we all know, some of you are there for a long time. You know this, that uh, your cameras and mics have been disabled. Let's use the chat box as much as possible, right? Uh, so whenever I ask you a question or you want to put your views or you want to reply to some of my queries and question, please use the chat box extensively, which will help you to see that you are participating and you are all there, right? So that's what uh, I would request all of you. This will be approximately about 60 to 90 minute session. I would probably say 70 minutes, 70 to 75 minutes. And uh, I'll try to make it as interactive as possible we can do. But as I said, every successful session is a two way street. I will try my best, but I need your support also to be able to make this a successful session, right? Uh, I will take questions at the end of each module and there's a separate, you know, uh, after class dedicated for that. We have about 30 minutes dedicated after the session for all of you to ask me questions. Now, what I will do is, and my request is, if you have a question, my request is just wait till the after class and formulate your question and put it in the uh, question box there. I'm going to go to the question Q&A section and take your questions one by one. That will help me to really, really answer all your questions. I have a chat here. Someone is trying to tell me something. Okay, great, wonderful, yeah. Okay, so uh, my request is please use the Q&A box uh, in, the, in your screen and put all your questions there, right? In case in between, I feel that someone really wants to ask a question, which is very important. Probably I'll take a few of those questions during the session also, right? So please, uh, use the chat and use the Q&A. At the end of the session, an assessment link will be shared with all of you. And of course, participants who have paid attention 
and I'm sure all of you will do. If you answer the questions right and get 70%, at least you will be given a digital certificate. I'm sure many of you have already got it in the last few weeks of attending these sessions, right? Uh, I'll also conduct a poll, which is nothing but a feedback. Uh, please be very candid in giving us a feedback so that we can improve these sessions as we move along, right? So welcome to all of you who have been there for some time and welcome to all of you who are now joining in probably for the first or the second time. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this yet another session of the Work Better Club, right? And as I said, my name is Gautam Gupta. Okay, here we go then. Now, now this is one session out of the multiple master classes on leadership, and I'm sure uh, many of you uh, have uh, attended a few of them. But uh, as you go along, these will be some of the sessions you can possibly attend. If not all of them, look at these topics and maybe if there's a challenge which you're having, you can possibly decide to attend a few of them, if not all of them, right? These are all curated by our experts. And this is a experience of the last decade or so of work better operating in the leadership and behavioral training. And this is what we feel are important for all of you. So please take time out in the Saturday and the Sunday evenings. Keep an eye on your calendar and uh, please attend these session as we move along. Now, let me ask you the first question here, okay? Before I talk about delegation, what is your understanding of this word called delegation, right? If I can get your responses in the chat box, that'd be great. Uh, currently, I have about, I have great, I've got about 52 participants or 53 participants on a Saturday evening. This is really, really heartening to see. And I thank you all of you to taking time out and for your self-development. So my question is, what is delegation? Can I quickly get some answers on the chat box? Okay, uh, Selva is writing, okay guys, I will probably, uh, the rate of your typing is probably faster than my understanding. Let me try to get the answers here. Getting work done by the subordinate, Bindu is writing, great. Richa is saying giving ownership. Selva Gan is saying allocating, where have you gone Selva? Yeah, allocating right work to right person. Very well said. Rakesh is adding getting things done through others. Yes, that's the most simplistic definition and that possibly is the best thing to say. Okay, uh, Deepu is added distribution of works to the right person. Oh, I, I like that word which Selva has added and Deepu has added the right person. Yes, I think that's a critical part. Uh, Vivek Deep has written authority up to which a person can work. Okay, so the word keyword for you is Deepu is authority. Uh, very nice. Uh, Prakush has added involving people who can contribute. Okay, that's people again. Uh, Vijay Prabhu is adding sharing work and getting work done. Okay. Uh, Santosh, what have you written? Let me check Santosh. Santosh has added continuous responsive on tracker. Oops, okay. I didn't get that Santosh, but if you can elaborate on that, Govin. Classifying the work and assigning to my team members. Okay, so you're identifying and classifying the work and assigning to my team member, probably as per their capabilities, if I can add Govin, okay? Sunil has added getting work done from others. Yes, of course. Uh, Gopa Kumar, effective distribution of expectation regarding work. Okay, there I've got one more interesting term, which is said expectation. How do I distribute tasks as per my expectations? Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Natasha has added to assign tasks according to efficiency. Nice, okay. Nitin, Allocating work to the person with the right caliber. Okay, that's another one. The With the right caliber, right? Capability, caliber. Okay. Uh, what else? Ganesh has added, delegation is to engage people who are having high skill and high will for high performance. I think your keyword is high. Okay. Ganesh, good. I, under, I like that, you know, the positivity you have shown in your definition. Okay. Uh, Pallav, yes. Hi, Pallav. Uh, where are you, Pallav? Okay, Pallav has added, passing on some responsibility to others, which you think is better, someone else does it as you are busy. Okay, so maybe you are busy in doing something and you can give that response to somebody else who is probably, who can probably do it better than you. Okay, that's a good one. Mani says, Deli, uh, Mani R is saying delegation is part of the leadership role. Absolutely right, Mani. Okay, I'll take the last few. Uh, I'll take the last few. George Jones has added distribution of work to the, attain the goals in the shortest possible time. And Karthik has added assigning work to capable person. And Raju P, assign and distribute work to get the work done in least time frame. 
I think I'll take one last one. Someone has written less monitoring and more support at juncture based on skill and will of team member. Who is this? Uh, let me just check this out. Who has written this? Okay. Um, not able to see the name here. Okay, so I think Tanmay. Okay, great. So thank you so much. Yes, that was wonderful contribution for all of you. My request is please, uh, Ira said q and I can, don't put your answers in the Q&A. I would request you put your answers in the chat box. Q&A box is only for questions at the end of the session as an after class. So right now I'm not going to be answering any of your questions. So please uh, restrain yourself from the question. I will come to these questions at the right time. Okay, great. So thank. So I heard some key words. You know, the right people with caliber, with capability, uh, where you can do something better and somebody else can do it better. Great. Uh, assigning tasks with some authority. I heard. Absolutely right. So delegation is, as rightly said by all of you, uh, is allocation of a task and a project. Yes, that's the important. Delegation is about allocation of a task and a project. Right to the right person, right? So that you'll have to identify the right person for the right task. I can't be giving a task or project to whoever is available, right? Many of us sometimes get a task and you wonder why me? I'm not capable of that. I have not had experience of this. How will I do it? But because you cannot refuse, you take on the task and somehow it doesn't come out. So it is not a failure of probably the subordinate. It is a failure of the supervisor of not identifying the right person for the right task. I think that's very, very important when you're delegating as a supervisor that have you chosen the right person, right? That's second point. And of course, delegation is not an open-ended task, right? You know, you have a five-year plan, do it as you want, whenever you want to finish it, no. All delegations about, about task and project and all tasks and projects have a certain time frame, which means that you have to ensure that you delegate, you have given them the certain time frame to complete that particular task. So that's part of the delegation process. So delegation is a process. It is not an activity that suddenly morning you get up today. I'm feeling very nice and happy. Okay. Today I'm going to delegate some tasks to somebody. No delegation is probably a much more thought out process and it starts much before you actually delegate the task, maybe identifying the right people over a period of time. And then you decide to delegate the particular task. So it has to be a proper thought out process, right? So the right task, the right person, and within the given time frame, and of course, with authority and empowerment, no delegation be effective, will be effective if you're not giving the right authority and empowerment, right? Empowering the person to execute the task and project effectively. The key word is effectively. Now, how do I get effectiveness when I empower the person, when I give him the right authority, when he or she can reach out to the certain people for completion of the task? They should not be for everything coming back to you. So that's very important for us to realize that it is about empowering the person. And of course, delegation is not about just giving away all responsibility and accountability. No, you have given a task, but the final accountability is yours as a leader, yet retaining the final accountability as their leader, right? Because if something goes wrong, then you need to be able to be accountable to your supervisors, to your stakeholders. Because ultimately it was your task, which you delegated and that person is also part of your group and your team. So you cannot abstain from the responsibility and accountability. So this is what I would say in a nutshell is probably a kind of a de definition of the de delegation. And we will explore these in more detail as we go along, as we move along. Right? So this is something which I thought I'll share of if I have to define delegation, these are a few pointers, the key bullets for a definition of a delegation. Let's now move ahead and talk about a little more details about delegation. Now, I'm going to give you a quick poll, like always. Uh, I'm going to put a question here. Uh, take about a minute to think about it and then use the chat box to give me your answers, right? So I request you to please do not immediately jump to the answer. Listen, read, understand, process the information in your mind and then put your answers. If you got one, two, three point, please put it in the same chat together. So please, my request is don't put you no know, one, four, second, third, then, then I will lose it in the entire chats, right? So the question is, why is it important to delegate effectively? 
please think about it especially those people who are at the supervisory role currently managers please think about this question why is it important for you to delegate effectively yeah not why is not why is it important delegate only why is it important to delegate effectively right so please share about three points and write all of them together in one chat okay please use the chat box for your answers okay i'm already getting some answers my request is please please provide previous slide okay santosh okay for your benefit okay so here is the question again okay ganesh has already added ganesh my request is in the same chat if you can put all three otherwise i lose your points as all the other chats keep coming up uh getting work completed in time and perfection in work okay that's interesting okay kartik my request is guys i want three points and i want all of the three together in one chat please put it in one chat otherwise i won't be able to read all the three points natasha has added uh gives a chance to someone to learn and grow time efficiency okay that's one advantage and that's why you should delegate okay ganesh has added building trust among employees deepu has added keep timeline to effectively complete and monitoring your work to get better results okay mani is saying time management oops i have lost you mani sorry let me just go back okay i'm getting some good answers here time management increase productivity value addition to work allotted okay great rakesh is added timely completion better results better control monitoring okay govin is added that is govin get the work done within the timeline more focus on other tasks to improve the potential of the team member amit has added to complete work on time to utilize all the resources to create future leaders amit i am very impressed with that answer yes that's a good point to create future leaders okay let's see what others are saying Savita has added to get all the important works done properly. Pallav has added some tasks someone else can do it better. Great, right person for the right work and meet tough deadlines. Okay, Maya has added you cannot do everything by yourself. Yes, some tasks are done better and faster by experts. Wow, and to keep the team motivated and feel ownership in a given task. Wonderful. Suresh has added to obtain desired effective result. Lohit has added. work and time efficiency empowering subordinates okay let me take a few more here uh abhishek better result renju accountability prashant to get targeted results maintain quality okay okay so i think more or less all of you are saying the same thing i'll just take a few last points here prakash has added as a leader you can't do all the work distribution of work time frame empowering team wonderful and venkateshwar right solution for the different sort of problem execution of best performance improve our leadership quality very good i think very impressed by the quality of answers by all of you and i can see that you have given the thought yes so there, it is very important for supervisors especially in this group who are leading teams it could be one person it could be 100 people it's very important for you as supervisors and leaders to understand the importance of delegation because it makes you effective it makes you efficient so it is not just a benefit to the subordinate but it is also beneficial to you and it your leadership skills right people who are able to delegate are considered as far better leaders than people who cannot right so it's very important for all of you to realize that as much as i like to do something but there will come a time when i have to let go wo kehte hai na hindi mein i can't let go i can't let go of something which i did so well i want to protect it i want to just hold on to it and that's why many of us probably are not able to delegate effectively because they don't realize the benefit of delegation so let's understand let's understand that why is delegation important and i think i have got the answers from all of you the delegation is important as a leader you can devote energy to more important and strategic tasks remember you have been elevated to a supervisory level you are a leader manager supervisor you have to do some very qualitative task right you have to do probably most important and strategic task right so you are you you can you need to have time and energy to do those tasks and that's why delegation is important to be able to give yourself time to be able to do those important and strategic task in in another session we had done about prioritization and we have spoken about urgent and importance important 
urgent and important. And we also spoke about the quadrant two activity. So in that we spoke about that, you know what, if I have to really, really be effective, I need to be doing what is important to me. And delegation is an important task. And of course, when you delegate, you're able to have time for your strategic and important task. So that's one big, big benefit of delegation. Of course, it gives subordinates opportunity to learn and grow professionally, in turn, increasing the level of organizational commitment. So when I delegate, I'm able to increase their organization commitment and you get, you gain loyalty and trust from your subordinates, right? You gain loyalty and trust from your team members, right? And most importantly, it enables them to grow, right? It enables them to use this top floor, right? It enables them to be creative. It enables them to look at a problem and a solution and multiple solutions and probably do that task in a much better, faster, cheaper, and you know, all that way, which probably you could probably never do. So it's, that's why it is important for them to develop, right? For the team to develop and grow professionally and also to increase the level of organizational commitment. So when you have a, a team member who feels that, you know what, my boss is giving me some important tasks and I'm supposed to use my skill knowledge to be able to come out with a solution, that really, really raises the level and morale and motivation of that person. And when you have highly motivated and high morale people in your team, it increases the level of organizational commitment. I think that's the underlying advantage also you get as a leader when you're able to delegate. So these are a few key benefits of delegation. Okay, I'm getting some more chat messages. Let me see. Okay, Gigi has added to get work done, empower and improve teamwork. Yes, that's what you have spoken about. Great. So that's exactly what is the purpose. Now, the question sometimes uh, is some, we need to ask is that, okay, now, not only I'm saying it, the world's best research company, the world's magazines, the, all the, you know, all the management gurus have also said the same thing about the benefits of delegation. Now, as per the Gallup survey of, you know, but 143 Inc. 500 CEOs Gallup surveyed and those with high delegated talent post an average three year growth rate of 1,751%, which was 112% greater than those CEOs with limited or low delegated talent, right? That's a direct business impact of delegation. So hard numbers are also impacted when you delegate. It is not just about employee motivation. It's about organizational benefiting by hard numbers also. And then a recent study published in Inc. found that 53% of business owners believe that they can grow their business by more than 20% if they delegate 10% of their workload to someone else, right? Again, 53% of majority of people. So that means a lot of the CEOs, they've experienced it and they've seen the benefit of delegation and the benefit it gives to them and to the organization they are working. And of course, the immense benefit the team leaders get. So that's very important for us to realize that why is delegation important? Because others have benefited from it. Yeah. Great. So now that we know what is delegation and why it is important, so let's understand some delegation myths. Okay. Let's understand some delegation myths. Yeah. Now, this is again from the delegation supervision by Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy, again, a very, very popular and a very, very famous world guru on management. And he has, you know, really, really shot down some so-called myths. Myths are like, you know, so-called truth, which are not true, right? Number one, there's not enough time to delegate. This is one of the biggest, you know, mistakes people do and the biggest lie people give that there's not enough time to delegate. Right? If you do it as a proper process, you will find time and good enough time to delegate. Right? Number two, the staff is not competent enough. Now, this is the biggest challenge again. When I tell my, myself that my team members are not competent enough, it is not their competency I'm questioning. It is my competency I'm questioning. Because I am unable to recognize competency in my team. That means I have got a serious problem. Either team is absolutely you know, zero or I'm not able to, or I'm a little afraid of recognizing their competency because they might be better than me. So that is very important for us to understand. So sometimes they think the staff is not competent enough and I can do everything. They can only do probably some you know, so-called routine task. Number three, 
If you want it done right, you have to do it yourself. Now, this is again something which a lot of the managers suffer from that because I know it, I have been doing it for so many years. I have done it to the perfection. This process was developed by me. So I am the best person to do it. So that's another myth which people have not realizing that there could be a better method to achieve the same objective and goal. Number four, people will think you're not on top of things if you delegate to others. Now, this is because of lack of confidence or fear where you feel that, you know, others will think that I can't do it. That's why I'm getting it done by somebody else and I'm not on top of things. That's absolutely, you know, absolutely not true. So don't get in that thought process that people will take you as a weak manager if you are getting a task done by somebody else. There's no harm in saying this is not my, you know, specialization and I have someone who is better at this and he, I, he, I'll take his or her support. And lastly, when you're good at something, you should do it yourself. Right? When you're good at something, you should do it yourself. Which means that, you know, uh, many of us think like, like the point number three, that I do, I do this, this is my specialization, right? So I should do it. I know I cannot trust somebody else to do it. And the key word is trust. If I cannot trust someone else to do it, then I have a big challenge, right? So it's important for us to ensure that, you know, we are able to do something. Yes, I might be good. There can be a better way to do it. So that's one thing which you need to be very, very careful about. Yeah. So these are some of the delegation myths, which probably many of us suffer from. Yeah. So please ensure that you do not make this as part of your thought process. Okay. So I've got a chat here. What does the chat say? Pallabh is saying, sometimes we are possessive about the credits behind the task. So we hesitate to delegate and pass on the credit. Yes, that's again, Pallabh, thank you so much of being very upfront with your thought. Yes, and telling the you know, ground realities. Yes. So many supervisors are possessive about the credits behind the task. So if someone does a good job, I have to share the credit with that person. I think with every leader, if you have to be an effective and a leader who is like sets the bar, Please be very happy to share the credit with others, right? Please be very happy to pass on the credit to your partner, subordinate. You will not, you will not know the amount of loyalty and trust you will create from your team members. That is the power you can really, really, you know, uh, use to really achieve much, much greater heights than you would. Remember the team is the one which will take you to those great heights. You will not be able to do it alone and go alone. So I like that answer, Palab. Thank you so much for that. Yes. So that's the delegation myth we all have to be aware of. Yeah. Okay. So moving on. How can we delegate effectively? Right. Let's look at some of the ways and techniques of how can we delegate effectively. And I think that's very important for, for us to really know that are there some tools? Is there some tips? Are there some techniques which will help you delegate? We have come up with a few tips and techniques it comes from my experience. Of course, it comes from our experience of interacting with many thousands and thousands of supervisors and managers and observing them at work. And that's where we have come up with these some of the, you know, what you call you know, uh, uh, some of the few key points which will help you to delegate effectively. Yeah. Now, the big five. Now, before I go to uh, this big five, uh, just give me a yes if I'm able to, um, sorry guys, uh, give me a yes if, you're, if I'm clear till now. Have I made sense to all of you? Uh, does it make sense? Is there anything which is uh, uh, missing here? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thompson, if the, if you're raising a hand to ask a question, just park yourself or you can, uh, I can brilliant. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm sure there are many questions. Uh, Deepu also raised a hand. Uh, if you have raised a hand for asking a question, then my request is put the question in the chat box or put the question in the Q&A box, right? If there's absolutely something you want to ask right away, then I can possibly take a question. So uh, three of you, Deepu, Thomas, and I think there was one more question from somebody uh, who else asked me. There was another person who raised his hand. Anybody, uh, is there any specific question or I can move on then? Okay, so I'll move on. Uh, as I said, please put your question in the Q&A box and I'll come back to that. Now, so, 
when I have started, so the point is that how can we delegate effectively? As I said in the beginning, delegation is not something which you will do. Oh, today, you no, know, I am under pressure. I have got too many tasks. Uh, okay, so I, I I have got six, seven, eight tasks to complete. I have a report to submit to the for for the board. I have to give it to my supervisor. There's a there's an important client escalation I have to do. And I have to also go and meet a particular client, and there's a report which I have to make. Plus, I have some performance reviews also, which are which are pending. And you know, I also have to do these other things also. Now, I cannot decide on that morning. You know, yeah, this particular task I'll give it to A, and this particular task I'll give it to B, because that is being giving doing delegation very wrongly, right? That is not following a right process. So it's important that. Whenever you decide to give a task, you should have already identified those people, and you should okay. If it is this kind of a task, then probably this person is the right person. If there's a presentation which requires creativity and data, creativity and data collection, this is my man or this is my lady, right? If it requires connecting with customers who are difficult, and this is the person probably I can you know delegate this particular task. right if i wanting a particular training to be done for my new joinees or people uh, acting as a buddy then okay now this guy is wonderful in doing that so it has to be be able to identify the task and the person you need to be able to really really look at your team and look at what are their strengths and then use that strength for giving them the task and project which will make your delegation very effective and successful remember delegation has to be successful which means that you might have to be also be be ready that not all delegate all delegated tasks will you know probably get completed so don't worry out of 10 times you delegate probably one or two times it might not work out that's absolutely fair that's absolutely fine so don't be under this you uh, know impression that 100% times my delegation should be effective no it may not happen sometimes right people probably Uh, given the current pandemic situation a lot of people are not you know physically and mentally in the right space so you might have identified somebody but he or she is not in the right space maybe he or she is not able to cope up which is absolutely fine you as a leader must be able to be be sensitive towards that so the this this entire pandemic has really really thrown up a lot of challenges for the leadership and we as leaders have to be really really be very sensitive and be very aware of people's capabilities right and of course while delegating there's a lot of support required to be given i'll come to that point in a while okay uh okay great let's go to the big five pointers of delegation so let's let's go and deep dive into how can i become effective delegator or how can i delegate effectively okay number one as many of you already identified delegate to the right person very important that we are able to identify the right person right that's what i said so depending upon the task identify the right person yeah now here i would like to probably request all of you to uh, give me some examples of some of you who have been able to right who have been able to delegate uh, so as i said Okay, so I'll, I'll take those questions. Uh, consider the following factors in subordinate by delegating task or project: overall competence, okay, strengths and weaknesses, expertise in that task, available time and workload. That's a very very important point out there. The available time and the workload, okay, because I'm sure none of our subordinates are sitting idle. They all have their task, their workload, and there's a limited time also, especially during this pandemic situation. so you need to be able to have identify people as per their workload and time and of course for the job profile their development areas now many of us in our team are you are identifying for the next level right you want to promote him or her right now for able not just because they have achieved a certain kpi because you also want to see whether they are ready for the next level and for that you will have to give them tasks and project which will make them ready for the next level so when there's a development area done that's also when you you identify the right person interest areas short term and long term goals and of course your past work experience with him or her so it is a very very detailed task 
of identifying the person as per the task and project. So this could be, and I, I, I request and encourage all of you to please take the screenshots or whichever screen you feel is important. And of course, please uh, use your diary and pad to capture your key takeaways. I'm going to ask you, and of course, this will help you to answer the assessment also at the end. Yeah. So these are the few things which you need to keep into mind when you are delegating to the right person. Now, quickly checking with some of you, especially people who are supervisors, managers. In the recent past, have you, anybody has delegated a particular task to anybody, right? In the recent past, in the last one month, two months, last couple of weeks. Can anybody give me an example of when you did a, you gave a, you delegated a task or project to someone. You may, not, may or may not take the name, but has anybody done it in the recent past? Yeah, can I get some answers in the chat box, please? Yeah, anybody, especially who are supervisors in the group, I'm sure uh, some of you may have done it. So can I get some answers? Pratish has added delegated tasks of getting information from market. Okay, Pratish, who did you delegate it to? Prashant? Prasad, sorry, Prasad. Prasad, can you please share your, what was the task? Ah, Pratish said to my ASM. Wonderful, wonderful. Why, why did you give him a task, Pratish? Getting information from market. Why did you identify? Uh, if you can look at the screen and tell me what was the reason you identify the ASM for that market information? Pallabha said, normally I've seen manager delegate out of compulsion rather than on priority. So delegation is arbitrary. Yes, that is what we are discussing here, Pallav. That delegation cannot be arbitrary. It has to be a proper process, right? It is not supposed to be a compulsion. Natasha, delegated tasks is required to be done every month. Okay, yeah, some routine tasks can be delegated, yes. Gigi has added delegate job of calling customers with my assistant manager. Okay. Savita, I have delegated a Friday meeting to my clerical staff and now even if I'm absent, the meeting is conducted without fail. Now, Savita, out of these seven points, which are the points you really decide, which made you decide to give it to uh, the person concerned? Can you tell me out of these seven points which are there on the screen, uh, or actually eight points? Mm, yeah, nine points actually, sorry. Out of the nine points, which one the one? Pratyush has added overall competence and his interest area. So it could be a combination of reasons. Okay. Savita, what, what was your reason of giving it to that, to my, uh, the Friday meeting to the clerical staff? Was it because you wanted to give it to somebody or because there was some reason? Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, it could have been possibly um, there was available time. Savita said competence. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Prasad has added delegating for ensuring compliance part to my next level officer. Ganesh has added delegated to TM brand presentation on field experience delivered during new joint training. Okay. Ganesh, what was the reason? Is it, uh, was it competence or some other reason? Lakshmipati is adding, I delegated to do documentation works all get GSL loans of to one of my clerks. Why was that? Okay. Well, I've done a lot of it in the past five months, especially IT related work, tech IT, all points mentioned by your valid. Okay, wonderful. Past experience and competence delegated for learning, which I said to make someone learn. Yeah, that could also be reason why you delegate. Okay, great. So, so if you see, maybe not consciously, but some subconsciously, all of you were thinking of probably the same points. So if you are, if you are thinking of these points, then you're on the right track of delegating to the right person. That's very key. If you get this wrong, then I will trust me, your delegation is bound to fail. So first point to getting to the right person. Yeah, very good. Okay, now moving ahead. Next is delegate the right task and project. Now here I'm going to spend a little more time on this, right? Now delegation, delegate the right task or project, right? A leader should delegate a mix of routine and new challenging tasks, right? It's very important for us to ensure that just, just because, you know, this is a routine task, clerical task, process task. Yes, it's important that you give it to somebody because now you are not required to do so. Some junior can handle it. But delegation should also challenge the other person. It should make him or her think. It should make him or her to use their knowledge and skill. And that will happen when you give them some new challenging tasks. 
right so it's good that some of you gave me examples of routine plus challenging so when i'm doing the friday morning meeting it's a probably a routine task right but when i'm doing a market you no know, for my am finding out what the details are in the market what's going on that possibly is a challenging task which probably he has not done or she has not done earlier so when i'm delegating remember the right task in project some routine and some challenging task because that will keep the employee very motivated and he or she will want to do more right furthermore leader should delegate tasks that require skills he or she don't have currently sometimes you want to push them to start thinking of ways they may not be qualified for that they may have never done it they may not have the necessary skills sometimes you want to develop a certain skill in them and that's why you push them by delegating a certain task to them so that also can be done uh some leaders should delegate tasks that don't have immediate deadlines yes it is not about always fire fighting because you have to pre present and you need data you delegate to somebody it's like one hour no sometimes give them a task which has you know it's like a project which has a comfortable timeline which is not a fire or a immediate deadline because you want that person to come up with some really good ideas ways forward collect data and present to you with a fresh perspective and fresh thought so that's another way to develop the skill of people yeah so that don't have immediate lines and will prepare employees for position the company needs absolutely so many a time when i identify a talent in my team and i want him or her to go up become a supervisor become a team leader then i give them task and delegate task which will enable them to start acting and doing you know like a backup leader when you are away for certain days they become your backup and they are the in turn the de facto leader and that's how you you know make them come up the ladder so those are the task and project which you can delegate so that's number 2 now delegate with a clearly communicated brief now here as i said i'm going to spend it more time on this part because many a times people get this stage wrong they have identified the right person they have identified the right task but what they have not done properly is to give a clear brief that what is it that you expect so this is something which is very important for us to realize let's understand this in a step by step manner delegate with a clearly communicated brief what does that mean define the final objective and the outcome begin with the end in mind and specify the desired results clearly right now you want a particular proposal i want you to work on this proposal but you need to give i want you to work on this proposal that our management gives us an approval on a project worth 10 lakhs so it's a clearly communicated brief it has a clear begin with the end in mind and specify the desired results clearly right i have to make this please make this presentation for me no please make this presentation for me because i have to go and present it to the director of you know, by you know monday morning so clear specific and with the end result so it's very important for us to be very clear in our you know briefing so first of all define the final objective and outcome what is it that you want which means before you delegate you need to identify the end objective what is the outcome what is the objective you are looking at right for you to then you know really really do a good job in delegation right so look at it the first focuses on task and the sec the other one focuses on yeah second example clearly highlights the end outcome so that's what you need to be very careful about so final objective and outcome so always be very sharp it could be just one objective which is fine don't give a you no know, just don't give a convoluted vague you know they close so slow what do you think is the objective no that is the wrong way of delegation you have to be very very clear and crisp about your brief about what is the end objective you want yeah okay next point about being a very very crisp in your briefing is explain the context and importance of the job now this is again very very important especially when you are developing somebody especially when you are trying to tell him you may have never done it but i want you to still do it because here is a context you need to have it could be for their growth it could be that when you do this task it will add a more skills you might fail you might succeed that's all, absolutely fine but the experience will make you much better and that will help you in your role so if there's a growth path required you can possibly say that right so explain the context and the bigger picture and importance of the job 
many a times they give a task people do it but they do it with not as intensity and commitment if you want intensity and commitment in a task which has been given as a delegated task or a project which is there it has to have a larger picture if i can't give a larger picture and context is important then i will just have people doing it as a routine they will not put their mind and no body and their soul and their commitment and they will not be in it as much as you want them so it's very important that we explain the context yeah why the task is important to the company department your team how it fits into the larger picture why it's been delegated to the particular person how it will help the person developing him learning about a new skill so so there's there's this concept no w i i f m yeah can somebody tell me quickly what does it mean w i i f m what does w i i f m mean faster swinger first come on what's in it for me muthu very good what's in it for me absolutely right yes so when someone gets that that this is what this is what it is in it for me for this particular task the boss my supervisor has given me this task or project and this is the benefit i will get then they will be highly committed to that task so you have to identify the wifm as you call it w i i f m right when i get the wifm right i will get my person fully into it yes vijay what's in it for me absolutely right good so muttu and vijay have you know got the faster singers quickly yes good so that's very important for us to understand so first is the right person second is the right task a mix of routine and challenging task third is about briefing the person clear task you no know, clarity in your mind and with the end objective what is it that you want along with that is the context and importance this is the critical part if you don't do this people will just do it as theek hai somebody my boss given me something i will do something put it together and give it right but i want him to be intense about it i want her to be really putting her mind into it please explain the context and importance it could be a small importance it could be just that you know what if i please ensure that the presentation looks good and has the right data because this has to go to the you no know, to the board or go to the senior management and there will be a lot of good decisions taken on this and which will impact our team which will impact how we'll operate so that's the wfm so it is not about making a presentation for me it's probably making a presentation which will take this organization to the next level that's the importance and context you have to give right so very important to give the importance and context right next point about communicated the rightly the giving the brief rightly is explain the task to them yeah very important that we explain the task depending on the maturity of a subordinate determine how much of detail you need to get into explain the what and how the task now if a person is experienced enough in the organization there you might not be required to spend too much time because he knows the product process organization he will figure it out or she will figure it out but someone who is new to the organization with outside experience but new to the team new to your team then there you might need to spend a little more time you might have to explain and ask for his understanding and for him to give you a explanation back so it's important that you depend upon the maturity you can go into it more detailing ideally you should first give them opportunity to create their own plan of action and share input on the same subsequent yeah so again don't tell it this is how i have done and this is how it has been so follow a to z in that same sequence you know sometimes we can be very very prescriptive and instruct and people probably will not you know appreciate that so you have given them the end objective now tell them okay now you come back in what is your understanding and they might with the if the end objective is clear doesn't matter what their plan of action is as long as within time and your end objective is getting fulfilled yeah and encourage them to get complete clarity before executing the task now one of the biggest and i have interacted with many supervisors and managers one of the biggest problem and the first why managers supervisor get angry and i'm sure some of you are in this room also they get angry when someone has accepted a task a subordinate you have asked them is it clear you have given them briefing he or she says yes sir and you have given them the time yes sir and you wait and you wait and you wait and at the end tar the last minute you get a mail or your person comes up and says what boss 
you know what i did not get a clarity on what is it that you wanted or i did not get a clarity on what is it what should i be doing how should i be going about it and this is the biggest problem which every supervisor has so you need to encourage that has it has the person got complete clarity before executing the task especially for those people who have probably never done this task earlier now many of us and especially in india and i'll tell you this is a india problem many sub subordinates are not very open about asking questions and clarifying are if i ask the boss to jare kya tujhe ek baar batane se samajh nahi aata can't you understand one side tell you so that fear you know makes them say yes sir yes sir yes sir and they go back and then they are scratching their head and saying now what and then they don't get a clarity they go ask here and there and of course then everything is lost so it's very important that we explain the task especially for those people who have maybe may not have the right maturity and who are new to your team any your organization yeah so explain the task to them and of course mutually agree on a plan of action yeah once you have given the task both of us must agree on a plan of action okay i've got a chat here what did it say palab say this normally happens in traditional companies palab you'll be surprised how much of it happens in the so called technology savvy savvy modern companies of the era and all that you'll be surprised because it has nothing to do with tradition and you know the, the modern it's all about the person's mindset and the so called how is a leader created environment is the environment of fear or is the environment of do as i say or is the environment of yes i've said this if there is a problem without fear and without hesitation the subordinate can go and ask a question yeah yeah yes so yeah i understand there could be hierarchy issue people are little little hesitant but then again it's all about the leader how he or she has created the environment so please create an environment where subordinates can come up to you one time two time three times if they are still not clear so please encourage that because that will be the step towards a better task completion as per your expectation so that's the third part okay moving on next part of course is what is the authority he or she has got now this is again and as some of you have said in your earlier inputs that if i give delegation without the requisite empowerment and authority it is like asking someone to walk and, or do something with the hands and legs tied right or hands tied behind the back and both the legs tied and say okay now walk and jump yeah that person might do it but then 9 out of 10 people will fall because you have restricted them if you want proper effective work from that person then you need to empower and give the right authority he or she must know that do i have to come back to boss every approval or i have this kind of you know power in me to get this approval beyond this i have to go to boss but within this i have got the full authority to operate do i need to get approval if i have to reach out to someone else in another department do i have to always go through the boss or i can send a direct email to that particular person and ask for the data now that's why it's important for you as a leader to able to empower the person and communicate to the organization and to relevant stakeholders about this person having the right authority and empowerment because if you don't give empowerment authority again the chances of failure are very very high so very important that you keep an eye on does she does he or she need to check with you before taking decisions do they need need to check with you before committing something to stakeholder and need to get her or his work renewed reviewed before sharing it with other stakeholders so that is between you and the person you could probably say out of these three the last one i might still retain the other two i i can give them empowerment the authority yeah so that's you have to decide but remember if you do not give them empowerment authority there will be failure and there will be someone falling so it's all about you so that means if i just uh, just take a one a few second break here that means the success of delegation the success of delegation is as much the responsibility of the person whom you're delegated to as much as it is yours if you're not doing the right job you can't blame the other person for failing for the task which you delegated maybe the problem started with you so please look at what you have done 
and have you been the cause for someone else's fail so please be aware of these things <clears throat> okay there is a particular is, is there someone raising his hand is there a particular question here okay yeah money if you want to put a question in the chat box you can please do it there okay the next part of communicating clearly is setting timelines i think this is this, this is uh, no brainer here that when i'm given a task i must be able to set the right timeline just not the time in the right timeline yeah so which means that sometimes depending on the urgency ask your subordinates to set their own timeline and deadline give them they you know what i need to be you know this 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 particular report or this project needs to be completed in the next 3 months now in the 3 months they can set their milestones and of course discuss those milestones with you right however there if there are any fixed aggressive client deadlines involved you should proactively communicate a deadline to them now is there a particular uh, hni client who needs to be tackled there is a he or she has got a big business and tomorrow or day after he or she is flying out of the country or not available for the next one month then in, within these three days you need to go and meet this uh, customer and possibly you know have a dialogue with him for the business or there could be a irate customer which has to be tackled today itself and you want this person of your team member to go and tackle that one so depending upon the task set the deadlines because again a task which doesn't have deadline will not be taken seriously you need to be able to give them the right deadline now that can be discussed it has to be a sometimes you will give because there is a there is a very aggressive deadline sometimes if the task is not that time bound then you will let them decide the timeline but of course it cannot be open ended it has to be narrowed down to a particular timeline so timeline setting is very very important for when you are communicating the brief ensure you set the timeline and of course very important is provide them with adequate support right now very important at many a times you know especially for people who have never done a particular task you they feel good about it because you as supervisor have you know given them the confidence but they are slightly sometimes kg they are not very sure of themselves they might have the knowledge skill but they are probably young in the team they are the youngest member still finding their way around and they are not very you know confident in their own ability they have it but they feel little less confident so i need to provide them with a the adequate support right i need to provide all the necessary resources that they will need be there to address their questions express confidence at the start in their ability to execute the task and provide encouragement yeah okay now here i like to tell you a, a small cricket story i am a big cricket fan so i always <laughs> i am sorry for people i know a lot of people from other location are locked in probably football or soccer is their preferred sport but i am a cricket fan so you will have to listen to this story of mine now i am sure all of you are aware of two cricket players of india saurav ganguly and virender sehwag right now within the sehwag when he used to play for delhi in his younger days and when he came into the international cricket he was a middle order batsman right and of course he started playing one day international and then he graduated to playing in the test matches also right but in the test matches he was a middle order batsman but he was always a very hard hitter of the cricket ball he would always his style was whoever the bowler is put my foot forward without any footwork eyes close and bang 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 he has a great eye you know hand eye coordination now this was something we saw a ganguly recognized in him right and what he did was you know in in the uh, after this uh, sort of uh, after virendra sehwag had played about 10 12 test matches in the in the in the middle order with not great success sort of identified the strength of him going bang 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 right from the beginning now he and then test matches in during sort of ganguly's era had changed where instead of building a innings they had to be you know faster run because victory was important test matches also wanted results so he he told one of the one of the days to sehwag you know what sehwag i need you to open the innings now sehwag was absolutely flabbergasted that what the hell i have never opened in even my younger days you are asking to open the uh, test match you know i can't do it i have never done it sort of ganguly said i am not just asking you to restrict your style of playing just go and play as a opener because you have a great hand eye coordination you are you chase the ballers and you know you really really score fast and i we need that in the opening of the innings right i am not in any way wanting to restrict your style of playing just go bang hit the first ball for a six i don't care at all because i know out of the 10 innings you will fail five times 
but out of the five times you will you will do well you will probably hit a century in less than a, a day and that's exactly what happened with virender serva and he's the only test match player to hit two triple centuries for india now the sachin has done it now rahul dravid has done it now ganguly has done it no other cricketer indian cricketer history in indian cricket history has hit two triple centuries and he did it while he opened the innings now this was where he got the confidence and support from his leader and supervisor a task was delegated to him he was not too very sure he probably doubted himself but ganguly was very clear that sevak skills suited perfectly the opening and when he opened in test matches he opened in one days and with sachin and ganguly he became such a you know devastating batsman so many a times some of our subordinates will need that push will need that encouragement and that's what we saw as a result right so when you do that you will get some fantastic result much better than what they expected and what you expected yeah so express confidence in the start that you know boss you are my boy you are my girl i'm sure you will do it great job yeah okay i've got some uh, in the something in the chat box yesterday england won due to correct delegation okay <laughs> okay and palab like all very proud bengali uh, says that's why dada is now bcci president yes i agree okay yeah one of the finest captains we ever had yes so that's the whole thing about providing the adequate support then lastly is about how much i can focus on the results okay now yes till now we have discussed but it's very important that i keep a eye on the result the goal the objective so delegation has to be with clear cut task right person and with all the right thing while you communicating the task to them and with confidence give confidence to them but the focus has to be always on the results right a person cannot lose track of the focus so you need to have what you call as the tracking and monitoring mechanism also built in in the delegation process but i should not get into micromanaging that again will have a negative impact on the effectiveness of a delegation right so track their progress check whether they are sticking to milestones and timelines agreed upon right this will only happen if you are organized as a leader you have set a proper tracking mechanism okay so told okay gautam i'm going to be i've given this task to you i hope it is complete clarity fair enough i i know you can do it we have about two weeks time in two weeks i want this project completed and i'm giving you the right authority to go ahead and do it but what i will do is probably twice a week once an update on whatsapp and once on a friday afternoon we'll sit and do a a, a a progress report right so that will give me a space that okay on wednesdays and fridays i will be have to give on wednesday is a summary it's a quick one and friday is a detailed you know update so that means in about two weeks i will have about four reviews with my team member so once you've done that please do not get into the habit of acha i know gautam you have to we have to meet on you have to send me on wednesday but a tuesday evening ko update dal do na please that's again very dangerous zone you're going in right that way i think you are not trusting the employee you're not trusting your subordinate if you set up a, pro a process of review and monitoring please stick to it because this will you know irritate the person this will make you micromanage and then in the mind of the person if you have to do it like this then i don't want to do it so that will become a challenge so concern yourself with what is accomplished do not get into nitty gritty of how it was done remember your way is not necessarily the best and only way focus on the end task if the end task is being achieved within the timeline you are good to go don't worry about how he has gone about maybe he or she has done a much better job or a faster job you have given two weeks they have done it in about one week with the same objective better maybe better results so that's what you need to be focus on that is the end task being achieved and in the timeline if that is happening but yes it's important to have because having progress tracking and checking milestone also gives this person a forum to come back and share the concerns with him or her if he said i have given you two weeks time now don't come back to me i will check with you after two weeks only that will be a wrong way to go about because then he or she does not get an opportunity to come back and share the good and not so good with you so this is also a forum for him or her to come back and share their concerns also 
yeah and then you can use that to clarify and support support him or her if there are any roadblocks maybe help them to clear those roadblocks so very important to have progress and check as part of your delegation process so this is what is what i would say is the five step process for good effective delegation okay so let me let me just quickly go back so focus on the results okay i'll just go reverse one focus on the results okay provide them with adequate support okay provide them with adequate support right now delegate with a proper communicated brief in which setting timelines is one right then the authority which he or she has that needs to be clarified and given right then we have explaining the task with complete clarity again identify the maturity of your team members so that they are able to get it properly and encourage them to clarify and ask for you know uh, uh, ask questions so that they know completely what is expectation yeah then of course is uh, explaining the context and importance if they get that they will put their heart and soul heart and soul sweat and tears into that particular task and that's what we want we want people to own up the task yeah and of course end objective final outcome and please in your mind please be clear before you give it to your subordinate so please be very clear in your briefing and then of course we spoke about yeah delegate tasks which are routine delegate tasks which are challenging okay yeah delegate the right task the right project and the number one is delegate to the right person with all of these factors some of these factors few of these factors even one of these factors you are good to go right so these are some of the things which we have discussed as far as you to become effective in your delegation okay so uh, i hope you have taken a notes in your pads and diaries and um, please uh, my request is if you can quickly go through your notes go through your uh, pad and yeah so uh, maybe i can request some of you to please uh, share your key takeaways of uh, what we have discussed till now before i put you on to our poll for the feedback and then of course i'll have my colleagues